Hello, my name is Pedro Rios, and I'll be going over here are the top five money making lobbying firms in Florida, written by Amy Keller and the Florida Trend. So, one of the first things that the article goes over is who are these lobbying firms and why are they so big and how are they how are they useful? What are they even doing during a time like this? Um, and then they also go over why how are they so big? Who are their clients? Some of their big clients that they have from Coca-Cola, Google, Apple, to even cities, states such as Florida itself, and they also even cover places like the MOB. They also, they're just huge, and they have big clients, and these clients need a lot of information, and that is a big reason for, as the article states, why they are so busy during a time like this when most places are suffering and losing clients while these lobbying firms are even gaining clients. Um, thank you. Hey everyone, this is Robbie Griffin. I'm going to be discussing chapter 5 of our book on interest groups and relating it to our article from the Tampa Bay Times titled, Here are the Top 5 Money-Making Lobbying Firms in Florida. All right, and as a group, we've also paid close attention to address each of the four takeaways of the chapter. And those are first, the history and reasons why interest groups exist. Two, why people are inclined to join interest groups, why they do. Three, the mythology and reality of interest groups. And four, the influence of interest groups on public policy making. So what that actually looks like then when they're in use. All right, so the reason behind the emergence of interest groups in America, this goes back to the original founding concerns and philosophies of factions um, brought up by Madison that we read earlier in the semester. So the belief emerged that by allowing factions to exist, not restricting the citizens' freedom to organize and participate in their government, that we wouldn't have to worry about a large, powerful faction seizing control and acquiring power and um, extreme influence over the people. Now, all the minor factions that were anticipated to be created by common people would basically just cancel each other out, and one wouldn't be allowed so much power or influence. Now, that isn't necessarily what we see today, and this is illustrated pretty clearly by our article, just on the smaller state scale of Florida. Now, so the myth... Um, to address the myths surrounding interest groups, um, they're still sort of believed to be effective instruments of political participation. And though that may be partly true, the reality is that they often solidify the dominant position of those in the group who are already affluent and influential. So ultimately, the bottom line is this today. Interest groups have researched in their areas of interest and understanding. And as the Ballard Partners Group mentions in their article, they've been knowledgeable of the federal role and all the workings of federal government and Congress and all the various funding stimulus relief packages that are coming out that helped inform and keep them ahead of what's happening. Right, so they're sort of riding the curve of this wave through the information and intelligence they've been um, acquiring. So, given by the Florida interest groups presented in the article, we can conclude their role today during the complications of COVID-19 has probably become even more involved. Now, Florida being a state that usually relies heavily on tourism for income, a lot of their critical funding is now coming through connections with interest groups. Um, so Capital City uh, Consulting, for example, has even gone so far as to say it essentially runs the state through the duration of the emergency and is very active changing policies and procuring services to respond to the pandemic and the economic crisis left in the wake. So additionally, since the government has had an increase in responsibility as businesses and individuals seek assistance, interest groups have even more closeness to some of the effects that communities may be feeling during this time. As it's become more difficult to manage public political campaigns to raise funds, current political elections have also needed support from interest groups. So what we're seeing now how just sort of their ability um, to acquire funding and sort of their connections through many different layers of um, not only American politics, but also just the communities and culture have kind of brought them to this this influence, this power that maybe the, the founding fathers weren't um, were trying to protect us from. Now, this isn't even to mention their partnership with tech giants like Amazon and Google, um, also sports teams like Tampa Bay Lightning, car manufacturing companies, and many other businesses like CVS, for example. There's always a lot of pressure for income, fundraising, ideas, results. Their expectations are met with the power of their involvement throughout their areas of influence. Overall, the real application of our book's chapter demonstrated through this article lies in giving us real examples of the power of interest groups. So just on the state scale of interest groups, as we see in Florida, we know that they're they've sort of evolved into a more involved role, um, especially today being advantageous to networking, 
with, during COVID-19 for fundraising to fill some of the voids left by the pandemic. Hi, my name is Hunter Anderson. This is chapter five, interest groups discussion. I am on the negative side of the debate. My topic is uh, grassroots versus astroturfing. Um, grassroots have a common goal, not motivated by money. Um, and it's not pushed by industry or uh, political ideology. Astroturfing, on the other hand, is similar to uh, fake news. It is pushed by money, pretend popular support by the industry itself, uh, contradicting goals. People are paid to be there. I mean, there's been Craigslist ads of just wanting or uh, pushing people that they would pay them to be there in support of an idea. Um, uh, for example, American Petroleum Institute urged oil industry employees to pose as citizens who oppose legislation change. Um, this is in protection of the industry and um, not, uh, and it's pushing a political agenda rather than a common goal. Uh, another example, DC lobbying firm working with the coal industry sent bogus letters to Democratic lawmakers in opposition of a cap and trade bill. Um, again, uh, is in the simplest form, grassroots are, are pushed by a common goal, common idea, not a political agenda, and not by money. AstroTurfing is pushed by a political agenda. Um, there is no common goal besides uh, besides uh, industry and money. Um, yeah. Hello, I'm Blake Tyson, and I'm here to discuss why interest groups can be harmful. One of the reasons interest groups are harmful is through the process of lobbying. In theory, pretty much anybody can lobby and there doesn't have to be any money, any changing hands during lobbying so they can get a, so they can uh, bring issues to the attention of legislatures. Unfortunately, this isn't the case in reality. Most of the lobbying is done by powerful businesses who have a lot of money they can they can spend to bring issues that would affect them to the attention of of Congress. A rather infamous example of this would be the Stop Online Piracy Act, which was almost passed in 2012. The Stop Online Piracy Act was primarily lobbied by powerful groups such as Time Warner, Viacom, Disney, Marvel, and other entertainment giants who were afraid of afraid of the internet and it would lead to them losing profits through piracy. However, since they lobbied for the bill towards the government, the bill, if passed, would have effectively ended the uh, ended fair use on the internet so and it would uh, shut down various websites since it removed a clause in the digital copyright millennium act which protected websites from copyright violations by their users so let me see i'm kayla drexler and i'm on the helpful side of interest groups um um, one helpful part of an interest group is how they push people into learning more about their particular political party. They use things like they'll call you and they'll email you and they'll send flyers and letters to you um, to persuade you into going to their rallies or protests and persuade you to turn your support towards them. Um, those are all examples of grassroots ways of um, collecting people for their political parties they support them in a nat they collect them in a natural way and not using organization groups like astroturf they use larger organ organization groups to um gather support um interest groups use this because it opens the public up to something that they might not have wanted to look into before 
and it gets people to research about elections and campaigns and it gets them to want to vote. This is helpful for like younger voters because they're new to politics and they might not be as, as interested and they might not care enough to research and learn about what political party stands for what and what side they that they want to be on. So using grassroots and astroturf um, can help persuade them in a certain way and persuade them to do research for each political side. Um, they're helpful and they're smart ways that interest groups use to collect voters for their political parties. Hi, I'm Denia Cooper and I'm discussing how interest groups are helpful. I see your point, however, lobbying allows for better representation of interest. According to the Georgia Professional Lobbyists Association, lobbyist groups are essential to our representation system. They prove to be essential through their overall purpose to form groups to advocate for different and specific interests, such as schools, churches, and businesses, among other things. This visualizes the spectrum of representation and members that come together as a united force to promote a shared interest thus exemplifying the beneficial aspect of lobbyist groups. To conclude our argument, interest groups play a helpful part in our government by educating people on elections to persuade them to vote and through avid representation of interest.